Hello and welcome to Guy Logic Gaming. My name is Temko and this is Grey Skies Dark Waters, a really story focused game where you go around and explore a world of mystery and intrigue where you figure out what might the hell be going on. Unanswered questions and maybe just some supernatural stuff thrown in at least if that's what you want to believe. The game is fully voice acted, has a bunch of hand drawn graphics that look subliminal but it's not exactly perfect. There are a couple of things here and there that annoy me a little bit. So, because the game is so heavily voice acted, I may have to skip a couple of places here and there to make sure I don't spoil anything on the story because, to be fair, the story is all this game has going for it in essence. So, let's go ahead and dive into some options, talk a little bit about PC performance, and then go ahead and dive into some gameplay. Options wise, we are done quickly. Speech, music, and effects volume, and subtitles on or off, which is good. Audio isn't always perfect, but it's always decent, but subtitles do help if you can track along at all times. The fact of the matter though is, the game is a 2D hand-drawn kind of game, so having no graphical options to speak of is not the end of the world. Not having resolution options, not having the ability to go windowed mode isn't as okay, so just having volume options, not the greatest. But because the hand-drawn graphics, it's not also the end of the world as it is, it's just not that great. The not so great does sadly continue in a couple of other places. And though some other parts of the game do make up for that fairly well, there are a couple of spots here and there that I find annoying enough that they distract from the overall gameplay experience. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna start at the start of the game. I'll skip some of the cutscenes and dialogue and explain what goes on. And we'll play the first 10 or so minutes of the game avoiding a bunch of spoilers. So the game first starts off with a cutscene where we're gonna skip that but it explains how your mom disappeared a year ago and now it's a year later and you're sort of trying to reunite with your various family members that have dealt with the loss of your mom in their own separate ways. Your sister, your younger sister and your brother and your father, they all have sort of coped with the situation on their own and your mom's been missing for exactly a year to the day and you start in the kitchen. The first thing you notice here, besides the voice acting, which I'll get into in a little bit, is the absolutely amazing art style of this game. It is wholly unique and drenched with personality. Every single screen, every single piece of furniture, every single backdrop and prop in the game is crafted with a definite sense of direction and art within the world. The game tries to create a sort of brooding and not really happy atmosphere while still creating a place of familiarity our familyhood, where people have grown up, people have led happy lives, and even though things might not be as great right now because of whatever else is happening with your mom, it's still your family, it's still your home. So there is a lot of really cool stuff, and the attention to detail is fantastic. Just an example is the newspaper on the table, which has a full article written there. Further down the line, there is a computer with a Word document for a school essay by one of the children in the house. That too is written excellently well. It all fits great together. There are so many little nuances and notes and screens and places and moments to view at that every single scene does become its own story. From a visual storytelling point, it's a very well put together title with every screen and scene showcasing more and more of the story, the world, the mystery, and all the little nuances going on with the game. It does really try to familiarize you with the characters involved, with the families involved, and with the personalities of the different characters. And though obviously the game is fairly short, a maximum of two to three hours of game time, there's only so much they can do in terms of character development in this period of time. Even so, they've done a pretty good job of creating a framework for these various different characters within the story. But the game also hits a snag there, and it's my biggest annoyance with the title. And that comes from both the animation side as well as the voice acting itself. While every single scene and frame is beautifully crafted and every single one is chock full of nuance and detail, when the character moves in the 3D sphere interacting with 2D objects, a bit like Grim Fandango or some other titles like that, it just doesn't look that great. While those other titles have the mystique and majesty of yesteryear and nostalgia glasses on your faces when you play them, this game really doesn't and the art style doesn't really lend itself that well to a mix between 2D and 3D in my opinion. They could have gone with a different set of art styles, they could have gone with full 3D, they could have gone with 2D characters maybe even. I'm not sure. All I know is that the current iteration in both character models, animations, movement, the entire thing feels stilted and really drains away from the personality from your protagonist character that you're playing 
as well as the different characters of your family in the house, where every scene creates a vibrant living world. Every step you take between scenes, every time you talk to a different character, I just sort of have to look away and try not to look at them because it moves away from the dialogue, from the surrounding scenery, and focus on the very ugly character models and animations. It isn't that great. And this also seeps into the voice acting. This is an indie studio with a very limited budget and they have had some issues definitely with getting voice talent in a controlled environment. Especially the younger brother Gus sounds like he's sitting in a room talking with an echo that got filtered over with a pass through seven times over. Compared to Lena, the character you're playing as, that sounds much more natural, but even there you can see and hear the echoes and clicks and clips of voice quality that isn't up to par with other titles, so to say. And that's understandable from an indie perspective, they just don't have the budget for that sort of production quality. In a game like this, where voice acting and art style direction is the main focal point of your story, it not only sticks out even more, but it creates a very negative experience in that moment. And it takes away from a story that is otherwise extremely well written. So as I said, every scene is beautiful, but then you have a snack with the character models being plain ugly. Then you listen to voice acting and everything said and done and every decision you make as a character, because the game has a very different divergent and branching story based on the choices you make, is amazing. And then you listen to the voice acting and you just want to sort of skip over half of the sentences, just read the subtitles. Because the voice acting pulls you out of the game again and lets you wonder, oh, do I hear a car in the background to its horn there? Did I not fill the data properly? Because that's actually what happened in a specific segment of voice acting. And that is a damn, damn shame because it takes away from an otherwise excellent artistic experience into merely good. Now, outside of the art style, animation, and overall story, the game, as I said, is non-linear, and there's been put a lot of effort into creating a narrative where you can focus on what you think is the best way to do things. And based on the characters you talk to, the different diaries you read, the different journals you read, the different bits of exploration you do, and the different bits of lore you find in the game, things you find about the game in different segments, based on all this extra information, including information that the game doesn't present you directly through dialogue, but presents to you in the background through a painting or a book on a shelf or anything else like that, that you learn more about the characters and their motivations and the kind of people they are. As you go into this divergent story, as you go into making these choices between your siblings, your father, the disappearance of your mother, as you progress and figure out what the hell actually happened, you're set before choices that really create wildly diverging dialogues and create wildly diverging references to the same things that happened. And that's a fairly fantastic thing they've done as writers in the game. Overall, if this was a book, a choose your own adventure book for example, this would be a very very good book. If this was a visual novel with a guide you through the paces, this would be an excellent visual novel. But it's a point and click adventure style game with a couple of drawbacks in terms of character animations and voiceover quality that really keep it from being part of the greats. The game even says that it's trying to be a little bit like To The Moon, a game with a fantastic story arc that you can play, enjoy, experience and then put down. And while the game definitely hits that mark in terms of story delivery and story pacing, it misses that that mark in quality of delivery in certain spots. I'm not trying to say that the game is bad, far from it. It's a very good title overall. For its niche, what it's trying to achieve, it does a very good job of doing so. But it misses a couple of marks here and there. Now outside of the actual pacing of the game, in terms of the various scenes, providing dialogue, the various different character arcs and the various ways the story paces itself, but there is one little bugbear I do have, and that is the way movement works in the game. As I said, the 3D animations with the 3D movement throughout the world already bothers me due to the quality of animation and quality of models. But when you go from segment to segment and area from area, even though you have quick travel between certain areas, you waste a lot of time traversing the same two or three rooms going around from the kitchen to the foyer to the dining room to the living space to the kitchen to the living room to the kitchen to the upstairs hallway down to the bedroom. It's fairly annoying to traverse the same area time and time again and you do have to traverse the same areas a couple of times to unlock the next segment. And you can do so by just traveling the same area over and over again, hovering with your mouse over every piece of art and trying to get a highlighted location saying, oh, there's something to interact with here. But a much better way, in my opinion, would be to highlight those interactive objects, allow you to focus on them directly, not let you wander over a screen looking at the art style where you sort of have to click on a perfect pixel to get a dialogue interaction. It's this little mix and match where they hit two chords right and then miss a strike. 
excellent art style, excellent story writing, and then weird echoey voice delivery in terms of voice acting. Very good overall world building, but then the pacing and movement is just a little bit off. But there is one part of the game that is absolutely good from start to finish, with no flaws I could detect in my opinion, and that is the soundtrack. Every part of this game is so well accompanied by the music in the title, the background sounds, the various different interactions between characters, the way you transition between zones, between events, everything is accompanied by such a nice audio track that fades in the background and creates a nice mood for every encounter and interaction between you and the other characters in the world. A very, very good soundtrack overall. It's not overbearing, it doesn't try to take the place or try to dramatize interaction. It's lightweight falls in the background but it's always present and always adds a little bit extra to the mood of the area you're visiting in or the segment and character you're trying to interact with. Just creates that additional extra bit of oomph that maybe just the visuals and the voice acting wouldn't do on their own. Really really good. So in conclusion, Grey Skies Dark Waters is a short game with a good story, divergence in the story and writing, with decent voice acting with some weird quality gaps here and there and just crappy 3D model animations that I wish they really wouldn't have done that really pull away from the overall beauty and attention to detail to the rest of the art style. A game with some replay value, though fairly limited after one or two tries, it creates a very good story experience that you can sit back, enjoy, and once you're done, sit put back down and just look at fondly in the future. And for the price point of about 7 US dollars for a region equivalent, it's not an expensive game. And for the playtime and experience the game offers, it might be just the right price for it. So I do suggest you at least check out Grey Skies Darkwire to see whether or not this might not be something for you to experience and enjoy, even if it's not the usual kind of game you play. If you are interested in Grey Skies Dark Waters, it's coming out on Steam on June 9th, and there's a link in the description below taking you straight on there. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, press that like button. If you didn't like this video, there's a dislike button for exactly that purpose. And leave a comment. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. We want to hear back from all of you. And if you want to see more content like this on the channel, just press that subscribe button down below and we will deliver. And until then, I wish you a good day and until next time, right here on Guy Logic Gaming.